If you want to learn more about cameras, real world reviews on camera equipment old and new and basically any other photography related stuff then consider subscribing to this channel and ring the bell for notifications. Okay folks, so if you've been following the last two videos in the series about the Panasonic FZ82 you'll know that I'm not afraid to point out the shortcomings in the camera as well as the good points. You can't shoot motorsport photography with a bridge camera. I'll just throw up on screen a couple of quotes um, from the 10 tenths motorsport forum and they say that bridge cameras like the FZ82 are rubbish for taking motorsport photography. Even Graham Horton who is pretty much the Panasonic guru on YouTube even he thinks the FZ82 is a poor bridge camera to do sports photography with. Well is it possible to shoot motorsports with the Panasonic FZ82? Well making this video has been slightly problematic at the moment with everything being on lockdown and sport being cancelled for the foreseeable future. So unfortunately my video today is a little bit biased towards motorsport. If you haven't already gathered from the photographs behind me I've now got to out myself as a complete petal head. There's nothing more I love than spending a weekend standing in a field somewhere looking at cars. I do a fair bit of automotive photography and motorsport is a good part of that as well. I've shot all sorts of motorsport from historic hill climbs, oval racing, drag racing, drifting. I've even been up to my ankles in mud shooting 4x4 trials. Basically, if it's got wheels, I'll probably take photos of it. I've even managed to have some of my work published, so it can't be too bad. Normally, my rig for taking automotive photography, particularly motorsport, is this. It's a Nikon D3300 with a 55 to 200 mil lens. It's just a crop sensor camera. Nothing fancy, but it does the job quite well. In addition, I'd probably pack with me a 50mm prime lens, as well as probably an 18 to 55mm uh, zoom uh, for paddock shots and close-ups. The question is, will the zoom on the FZ82 make it a decent camera for motorsport photography? At the end of last year, in November and December, and also in February of this year before coronavirus, I attended three motorsport events, just local grassroots stuff, and I took along the FZ82 to see if I could get some different shots with it, and if it was in all a decent camera for motorsport. So really I've got my work cut out for me. Not only, as Mr Horton points out, is this camera a fair weather camera and I'm shooting in February, November and December, but also the guys over at 10 tenths say that it's too slow and won't be able to get any good shots. So first we'll have a look at one of those givens for motorsport photography and that is the panning shot. If you're not familiar with panning basically what you do is that you focus on the car and you follow it choosing to take the shot at your optimum time. The ideal thing to do is to select a fairly low shutter speed and then what will happen is you'll get motion in the wheels of the car and also the background will be nice and blurred and you'll get the car nice and crisp so that it gives a real sensation of speed through the image. Here are a few shots I've taken and see if you think I've hit the mark with the FZ82. Well, I think they weren't too bad. Obviously, this these types of motorsport, the auto test and the oval racing, aren't huge high speed tracks. Um, the auto test takes place in a public car park, so they have to keep the speeds down. Um, but I think I think it did okay, didn't it? Leave your comments below if you disagree with me. But next, we'll look at cornering shots. Here the idea is similar with panning is to still create motion in the wheels 
but obviously follow the car into the bend and try and get the body of the car fairly crisp and motion in the wheels and a little bit of motion not too much in the background again the shutter speed slightly higher than with the padding shots but again i want to show that there is a race in progress the cars are moving and maybe we've got a bit of drifting or uh, wheel spin or something like that happening to uh, to show that there is ac some action going on with the shot also another good tip is at this point if you can manage to get some kind of eye contact almost with the driver basically if you can see the driver in focus and you can see the whites of his eyes that's pretty much a good shot in my opinion next we'll look at a couple of freeze frame action shots here what we do is high shutter speed and really freeze the action ideal for an impact or if you were shooting football it would be you know a goal being scored or a tackle or something like that everything in focus everything nice and sharp and uh, that's the whole idea of this type of shot I must admit I tend not to shoot in this type of mode I prefer to see motion within the shot but obviously quite a lot of people want to freeze frame things with motorsport i think it's less important but obviously for things like football swimming diving anything like that surfing whatever you want a nice crisp shot of course what happens on track is only part of motorsport there are other things you can take photographs of when you go to a motorsport event and that includes the mechanics fixing cars the drivers themselves chatting Possibly you might get shots of the drivers in the cars on the grid before a race starts. Um, even the crowd could be interesting and for the characters. So there are plenty of opportunities to use the FZ82 even if you don't fancy shooting images on track. So the zoom range on the FZ82 unsurprisingly has helped me capture some different kinds of shots that I normally wouldn't be able to get with my DSLR and 200mm lens. It does a fairly decent job in the paddock as well. Yes, in low light situations you will find that it does create that noise that we know this camera is capable of doing. But if you can work around those problems then I think the FZ82 could make a fairly good camera for motorsport. I've not yet had the chance to test this camera in full summer weather shooting motorsport. Um, hopefully I'll get the chance to do that if we ever get out of lockdown. I quite fancy taking the camera to some of those larger circuits or perhaps uh, rallying, um, drifting. So the big question, have I been able to match the quality I get with my DSLR? Well, the answer to that is not quite. Again, I haven't tried this camera in bright sunshine, so hopefully the results will be slightly better. I did find the images were slightly more noisy than with the larger censored DSLR, but it did give me more reach. That lens um, meant I would go comfortably up to four, five, six hundred millimeters and take shots where I can only manage up to say 200 with the DSLR. But overall, I didn't think that the FZ80 did a bad job. I wouldn't expect to be able to take magazine quality images with it but if you're an enthusiast you want to record a day at the track get some shots you're really happy with probably impress a few friends as well then yes I think the FZ82 is definitely up to the job. Perhaps the best message to take from this video if you do own a bridge camera or even the FZ82 and you fancy shooting motorsport is to have a look at the shortcomings of your particular camera, work around those and give it a go. Get out there, shoot and uh, don't believe that you can't shoot motorsport just because you own a bridge camera. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider subscribing to the channel and uh, give us a thumbs up, uh, welcome any comments you have below and have a great day.